Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Paul Bailey. Paul is a Fisheries Division Supervisor for Game and Fish. We're going to talk about the proper way to release fish back into the system so that they have a better chance of survival. Paul, first of all, I guess this catch and release philosophy has really kind of taken hold in North Dakota. Uh, yeah, there's a, we're blessed with a lot, number of really good fisheries in North Dakota right now. And uh, the good news is, is in some of these lakes, anglers are encountering an awful lot of fish. So we've got regulations in place limiting the harvest of anglers to try and maintain the best fishing possible in these lakes for years to come. Uh, but sometimes after anglers, uh, if they choose to harvest their five fish, they want to continue fishing. So it's good to know how to properly release these fish to uh, help us maintain the best fishing possible. Certainly. Paul, there are a couple of systems in the state that rely solely on natural reproduction, mm -hmm. like Wahi, the Missouri River system. Right, and in, in recent years we've been really fortunate to have some outstanding fishing there where I think oftentimes anglers are encountering you know, good numbers of fish each day. And that's given the anglers the ability to, you know, selectively harvest fish. You know, if they want to, you know, some, a lot of anglers believe, you know, those 15 to 17 inch fish might make the best table fare. Mm -hmm. So that's what a lot of anglers are kind of selecting for. But in that process, and maybe trying to keep your five 15 to 17 inch fish, you might be encountering some smaller or larger fish that you'd prefer to release. So that knowing how to properly release fish uh, definitely is, is a benefit to the fish population. We have some fish in the nets here that uh, Paul and the crews have been tagging. Let's uh, grab one of those and kind of show people the proper way to hold them and the proper way to actually release them back in the water. Sure, yep. Well, I'll try and do this relatively quickly because another rule of thumb is I shouldn't be holding a fish out of the water longer than you can <laughs> hold your breath. So we'll, we'll try and get through this pretty quickly here. But uh, the caudal fin of the fish is something you definitely want to have control over. Uh, that's this, this area where my left hand is. So if you can, you can firmly grab that without doing any damage to the internal organs of the fish. Now this is regardless of the size of the fish, correct? Exactly. Yep, yep. You want to have full control of the fish. And then the second place you want to put your hand is around the pectoral fins because we've got a lot more bones in that area of the fish. So you can firmly grasp the fish in that area and the caudal fin without doing any damage to the internal organs of the fish, the, the stomach and, and other things in there that uh, uh, might be susceptible to, to damage if you squeeze the fish a little too hard. Mm -hmm. I'll grab another one here to keep them all fresh. And, but, uh, yeah, but this allows you to firmly control the fish and hopefully it uh, shouldn't be able to flop out of your hands if you control both its tail and its head in this fashion. So it shouldn't hit the floor of the boat. That's definitely something you want to avoid. And after you've got it firmly grasped, you hear a lot of things about moving it back and forth in the water as you mm -hmm. place it back in. Show me how you do that. Sure. Uh, set the fish over the, the side of the boat. Uh, now a lot of times if you've handled the fish correctly, uh, you can just release the fish and it'll swim right away. Some fish may have been a bit more stressed or, or possibly come out of you know, slightly warmer water that might make them a little more stressed. And uh, if you just grasp the fish by the tail, move them back and forth to get that water moving over their gills, a lot of times that'll help them revive so then you can let them go and they'll swim away happy. Is it kind of a rule of thumb, Paul? I know uh, they say the longer the fight, the more tired that fish is going to be. So maybe. Exactly. Uh, spend a little bit more time with them to revive them? Right. I guess that's something also important to point out that, you know, if you're practicing catch and release angling, the faster you land that fish, the better it is for that fish. That's less stress to the fish. So I know it can be a lot of fun reeling in fish on light line and light tackle. Uh, but if you're looking to practice catch and release angling, the quicker you land that fish. So use appropriately sized tackle for, you know, don't, don't use your, your ultralight perch fishing gear potentially for if you're targeting nicer size walleye on the Missouri River system because a lot of times those fish might be fought to exhaustion and have a really tough time recovering. A lot of times uh, fish that people are going to release are big. They're the big female walleyes and things. Mm -hmm. They want to get a picture of them and they want to get it back in the water as you mentioned as soon as possible but there are ways to hold them like you explained a little bit earlier so as not to damage yep, that fish. Exactly. Yeah, if you uh, smaller fish, it's not uh, as important. Uh, you can hold a fish more vertically and they have enough uh, connective tissue in the internal organs on these smaller fish that you won't get organs sliding down the body cavity. Now, if you've got a, it's a little different if you've got a, you know, a 10 pound walleye or a 20 pound northern pike that holding the fish vertically may actually cause some internal damage to the organs because those fish are so massive that sometimes those internal organs that, that are designed to be supported horizontally and uh, supported by water 
are out of water may slip down in the fish and cause some damage. That's the last thing you want if you're trying to release a, a trophy fish unharmed. Sure, so this way instead of this exactly. way. Exactly, yep. I guess, Paul, uh, some very good advice is if you're going, you know you're going to take a picture of a big fish, the chances mm -hmm. are that you're going to catch one, have your equipment ready. Right, I think most anglers are inherently optimistic, I guess, that you're gonna catch a nice <laughs> fish, so uh, that's a good policy. Keep your pliers handy for a quick you know, hook removal and keep your camera where it's not buried in your boat. So if you do catch that really nice fish, you don't have to spend you know, two or three minutes or longer than you can hold your breath looking for that camera. So we can get that fish back in the water as quickly as possible and you got that nice picture for a memory. Uh, what about gill plates? You see a lot of pictures of very large fish where people have their fingers jammed up into the gill plates and things. Does that bother them? Uh, that yeah, it, it, you definitely want to keep your fingers out of the gill plate uh, just because that's a very sensitive area on the fish. It's very easy to damage. Um, looking at, at fish like this, uh, I mean you can sometimes on a walleye, you know, hold, hold their you know, hold them by the outer portion of the jaw, but really you're going to be better off holding them in that pectoral fin area and the caudal fin to maintain control of that fish. A lot of times if you're trying to hold the fish too close to the, the gill plate on them, uh, you're losing control of the middle of the fish and they can flop out of your hands. So uh, that is the best way to do it, hold the fish horizontally by the pectoral fins and the caudal fin. And it, that certainly can make some nice pictures. There is another thing that we need to discuss, and that is uh, fish that are deep hooked. And a lot of people on a lot of bodies of water have taken to pulling spinners, uh, pulling lendy rigs and things like that, where you're feeding a fish line, mm -hmm. and they get hooked uh, deep down. Tell me the procedure for doing that, uh, releasing these fish that isn't going to harm them. Sure, I guess that's another important aspect of you know practicing catch and release angling is having the pliers handy uh, long enough to reach back to the back of the fish's mouth. Uh, and so if you can get the fish's mouth open, sometimes it's good to have two people there too. Uh, so one person can maintain control of the fish, uh, holding as I just showed you, uh, and then another angler can hopefully unhook it for you if you're dealing with a larger fish. Uh, but yes, if they swallow the hook, uh, so to speak, uh, and you can see that it's hooked, you know, kind of in the top of the throat or anywhere back from that, you're better off just cutting the line. And most of these hooks will slowly dissolve over time and hopefully the fish will recover from that. They've, they've got a better chance of survival uh, with uh, when they're deeply hooked, if you just cut the hook, let them swim away versus uh, trying to wrench it out of there, you'll probably do more damage. In an optimum situation, I've got a 10-pound walleye in the net, I've got it up next to the, to the boat, and I, want to, I know that I'm going to release that fish. Uh, what's the best way? And, and this is something we talked about earlier, too, sure. is just keeping them in the net. Exactly. Yeah, you can leave the fish in the net, remove the hook you know, over the side of the boat so the fish is still supported by water. Uh, and then it's pretty easy to pull the fish. You know, you can take the fish then out of the net, have control of it with two hands, have your camera ready, snap a picture, and then release it that way, which is much easier than, you know, if this was a 10 pound walleye, I'd have a tough time controlling that with one hand while I'm trying to remove the hook. And that's how you can do some damage to these fish. So uh, it's definitely a, a, a good tip. Larger fish, remove them over the side of the boat from the net, and you can certainly pull them out of the water, snap your picture, and release them. Shore fishing has become very popular in North Dakota, and there are a few hints for shore fishermen so that uh, they don't damage fish too when they release them. Right, and it, it you know there, there's some smaller landing nets that are available that might be pretty handy for shoring. There's if you're wader fishing, for example, uh, I know that they're really popular with, with trout fishermen. Uh, so you can actually land the fish with a net instead of having to drag it up onto shore like uh, you see a lot of anglers doing. So uh, dragging the fish up on shore again might remove some of that slime coat from the fish if you're planning on releasing it. So. Uh, kind of, it doesn't matter if you're fishing from the boat or shore. I guess you want to leave, uh, you know, minimize your handling of that fish, release it as quickly as possible, and you know, have your camera and pliers ready. Do you want to use gloves as often as possible? Well, if you if you don't have gloves on, that's fine. But uh, it's best to wet your hands first, then, so you're not removing that slime coat from the fish. That's uh, one of the fish's main defenses against disease and, and infection is that slime coat. So you certainly don't want to remove that. And wetting your hands before you handle a fish is one way to do so. All right, Paul, thanks. Applications for the 2015 Deer Lottery should be available soon if they aren't already. There are 43,275 licenses available in the drawing this year, which is just under 5,000 fewer than last year. Deer numbers are still below objectives due to the prolonged effects of severe winters from 2008 to 2010. Any antlered and antlerless tags were reduced, as were antlered and antlerless whitetails. Mule deer doe tags are again off limits in the Badlands. 
but mule deer buck tags were increased by over 500 licenses. You can apply online at the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. The old school paper applications will be available at the usual licensed vendors and sporting goods stores, or you can apply over the phone by calling 800-406-6409. For Paul Bailey and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.